everybody, Gabby here with your battle of the day. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm trying to record from Showdown, so if you have any feedback on video quality, on audio quality, on Showdown quality, I guess, please let me know in the comments. Again, this is something new I'm trying. I did a couple of test battles, but I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Um, anyways, we're also doing something different today. I'm t doing another uh, viewer challenge from Twitch. Uh, this is Firemind, aka Brendan, and he's been watching me on Twitch. And for those of you who don't know, the only way I'm accepting viewer challenges right now is if you uh, earn one by watching on Twitch. What you can do is if you just hang out in the chat long enough, you earn points and you can spend those points on battles. Um, please understand that I actually have a really busy schedule outside of YouTube, so I can't just accept challenges willy-nilly. Um, you're always welcome to ask, but please, please, please don't take offense if I say no. Um, the point system is just a way of me um, being able to say thank you for your support and um, also to kind of add a little bit of a bottleneck so I'm not just trying to schedule battles like every day. So anyways, that's enough of my real life problems. Um, so it looks like we are playing a chalk team today, except there's no C. <laughs> there is an A, A, <laughs> there is an Entei, a Landorus I, a Thunder, or Landorus T, a Thunderous I, Got my letters mixed up there. A Amoongus, a Kangaskhand, and a Aegislash. So the good news is, is it doesn't look like Brendan counter teamed me that much. So, um, hmm. The question is, how do I want to play this? And the answer to that is, I'm not really sure. I think, I don't see anything really here that will punish my Landorus except maybe his uh, Thunderous. So I think Landorus is a really strong lead for me. I do want Entei in the back. I'm not sure if I want Entei as a lead. I'm gonna try it this game. This is a best of three game if the video title that I haven't written yet uh, didn't give it away. Spoiler alert for me, I guess. Um, in the back, I think Metagross is gonna be really helpful and um, I'm not really sure who I want my last Pokemon to be. I think I'm gonna go Scrafty. I'm gonna go Double Intimidate. I don't really see any reason why I would be punished for doing that. So good luck, have fun, Brendan. Um, hopefully this will work out. And hopefully you pick your Pokemon soon. There we go. I think there's a little bit of a lag on Showdown today. I've noticed that, and I don't know if it's my recording setup or what, but like when I was typing the Brendan before the match, I was like, okay, so just wait so I can like, you know, do stuff. And he's like, okay. But it took like a minute and a half for my message to show up. And I was like, uh-oh, this isn't good. Anyways, that's not your problem. That's my problem. Um, your problem slash my problem right now is how to deal with this lead. Um, obviously Kangaskhan's gonna fake something out here. I would assume it's gonna be the Landorus. So I am gonna press the rock slide button and on the off chance that Entei does get to move. Oh my God, that was a huge wall of text. Um, oh geez. Uh, I really wanna double into the Thunderous. So I think I'm gonna do that. Let's do it. Okay. And now we wait um, more. <laughs> okay. This lag is kind of ridiculous. Anyways, no fake out. Uh, Rock Slide will connect with both sides of the field. Thunderous goes for the Thunderbolt straight into Entei and reveals that it has a, um, what's that thing called? Stone Edge. And Kangaskhan forgets to Mega Evolve, so Double Edge only hits once and Entei does not get knocked out. Um, a little bit of user error there. Hopefully it wasn't Showdown's fault, because I know that I forget to check the button sometimes too. Anyways, his Landorus Therian comes in, is going to intimidate everything on the field. I think this is a really good opportunity for me to switch in Scrafty, so I'm going to do that. And as for Entei, I mean, if he has a Mungus in the back, then, you know, I still have my Metagross. I'm not too scared of losing Entei, so I am going to try and Sacred Fire that Landorus just to get a burn on it. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Um, yeah. I wonder if Kangaskhan will Mega Evolve this turn. I feel kind of mean saying that, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, Landorus Therian goes back, Scrafty comes in, Intimidate happens again. Um, Kangaskhan goes away and in will come Aegislash actually, and Landorus does go for Rock Slide. Um, it misses Entei, which is huge. The question is, will Sacred Fire burn here? And it does. 
So that was the best poss possible outcome for me with Entei, especially now that Landorus is at minus one and it has a uh, burn. So it's effectively useless except for flinch rolls. So because Entei did so well last turn, I am going to have it stay in. I'm going to go for Fake Out onto the Landorus slot and another Sacred Fire onto Aegislash. Landorus is the only thing that will outspeed Entei, provided it's not like a Scarf Aegislash, which I don't think is the meta right now. So yeah, and even if he switches here, um, or if he King Shields, uh, Sacred Fire has the added benefit of being the one of the few physical moves that actually doesn't make contact, so I will not take any more negative health damage um, from Aegislash. And now that we know that uh, Aegislash has already used its King Shield this turn, I am going to go for Knock Off and uh, Sacred Fire. I don't think Entei's going to survive this Rock Slide here unless we get another miss. It actually does, that's really good to know. And Sacred Fire will connect with Aegislash, does half damage. And it's also worth noting that Scrafty is slower than Aegislash, meaning that Knockoff would have connected if Scrafty didn't flinch. And we see Aegislash's leftovers. So... I have to send in Landorus here. I really don't want to, but I don't want to eat Shadow Ball. Um, even though it would give me a nice opportunity to... Uh, to, I guess, um, try and knock off Age Slash again, but I don't really want to make those kind of calls, especially a game one that I feel like I have a decent advantage with. So I am going to bring in my Landorus, I am going to uh, intimidate everything, and then I think what I should do here is I'm going to go for... Oof. Um, let's switch out Scrafty. And then let's go for Rock Slide and just try and flinch. Age Slash could also have Wide Guard here. Um, which would be really good to know. And that's why I'm actually sending out Scrafty. Because I think no matter what, Landorus T is going to die this turn on his side. Um, because of the burn damage. I think. If he does survive, it's going to be like with one health. So I really want to have that Intimidate um, back. Anyways, Age Slash does King Shield. Um, his Landorus is faster though. That's really worth noting. And... It will flinch my Landorus, so that was great. Um, anyways, I guess now Metagross is kind of in an interesting pickle because I can protect here, I can switch in Scrafty again, I can just flat out attack. Um, it's a really tough question. I'm not too afraid of that Aegislash though. I would much rather get my speed. So let's go for a Rock Slide and protect and just kind of let this play out. Um, even if I do flinch again here, um, best case scenario, or worst case scenario, Landorus dies this turn. Um, actually, I won't flinch because Kangaskhan comes in. Um, probably would have been worthwhile to double the Kangaskhan slot, but I'm not, I, I don't think this is an issue. Uh, because Shadow Ball will try to connect with Metagross and fail. So, I can now send in my Scrafty, get more Intimidate. I'm just going to keep pressing the Rock Slide button on Landorus Therian, because even if I do get Intimidated, um, the flinch chance is what's really going to help me here. So, yay! <laughs> Oof. Um, what else? I don't know, actually. I could have I could have tried and predicted the um, Landorus switch in from him. However, it's not going to happen, because... Uh, Aegislash stays in, and Fake Out will connect with Scrafty and gets a double crit? <laughs> what is this madness? And Rock Slide misses Aegislash, meaning Scrafty gets hit three times with critical hits this turn. Why? <laughs> um, thankfully, I just need to kill Aegislash this turn, and I should be okay, but wow. Triple crit. Triple crit. I mean, after Scrafty got burned three times yesterday, like, Scrafty, you're killing me here. <laughs> Anyways, Kangaskhan goes away, Landorus comes out, it will intimidate everything on the field. Um, my goal here is to kill that Aegislash, but with another Rock Slide miss, I don't know if that's going to happen, because Flash Cannon will pick up the KO on uh, Scrafty, and yeah, this is bad. <laughs> Just to goes to show you how triple crits can just ruin your game. Um, 
So the big question here is what is going to happen this turn? Because if Kangaskhan fakes out Metagross and then also goes for the attack onto, um, or if Aegislash also attacks Landorus, then it's pretty much game over for me. But if I can try and call that and actually attack with Metagross and try and kill Aegislash, I think I have a shot at this. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's really my only play here. Um, I've been in these situations before, and because there is so off so much offensive pressure from Kangaskhan, I really have to play this right. So that's why I'm going for the risky play. We'll see what happens. Anyways, Kangaskhan does go for the fake out onto Landorus T, who will flinch. Metagross will attack the Aegislash and will get the KO. So this is over. Game one. Somehow I managed to hold on to it, despite all that crazy hacks. Um, good game, Brendan. Uh, we're going on to game two, because this is a best of three. Probably should have been taking notes, but I do not have my notebook today. I cannot show you my notebook, because I thought, oh, it's showdown. Yeah, don't, don't ever think that. Um, though I'm pretty sure that, yeah, so the skin I'm using on Showdown, or maybe it's just Showdown now in general, will actually show you, okay, he's used Double Edge, Fake Out, Sucker Punch. So I'm cheating in terms of my notes. Anyways, I'm gonna rematch. So let's do this, game two. Let's see how long it's gonna take. Um, don't count on Showdown to take notes for you, especially when you're going between games, because it should wipe everything out at this point. Um, all right, and we got the serious champion battle music here. All right, um, game two, what to do? That's the question of the hour. It's worth noting that um, his Entei and his Amoongus were the two that didn't make an appearance. Um, probably gonna see Entei this game because if you noticed, I didn't really bring anything to help deal with Entei. So let's kind of lead a little bit aggressively. Let's lead my Lodic and Landorus, I can switch my Lodic out at any time and be okay. Um, Metagross didn't really help much last game, so I'm gonna bring Entei and Scrafty in the back, actually. Um, both of them can help a lot with everything on his team. Metagross was really just for a extra ice thing, extra, even though it's not really an ice thing, and a extra Zen headbutt for that Amoongus, but between, I think, my Lodic and Entei, as long as I be careful, as long as I'm careful about this, I should be fine. And I really think my Lodic is gonna be is gonna give me an edge here. Um, anyways, we see a Thunderous Kangaskhan lead here against my Milotic Landorus Therian. Unfortunately, that means I do have to switch out. But because I do have double intimidate on this team, I'm probably just gonna do that. <laughs> not expecting this rock slide to go through. I would be very, very, very not surprised here if um, Thunderous just goes for Fake Out Hidden Power Ice into uh, Landorus. But I've essentially nerfed Kangaskhan, and if I get a free switch in for Entei next turn, I'll be exactly where I want to be in terms of my offensive positioning. So Fake Out will connect with Landorus. Uh, Landorus does flinch, and we do see HP Ice against Landorus, so he dies. Um, if I wanted to play that a little bit better, I could have left my Lodic in. Um, but I'm not, I think I'm fine, honestly. I'm not worried at all right now. I do tend to notice I do that though. As soon as I click in like buttons, um, I will say, oh yeah, my opponent will do this. And then it's exactly what they do. And it's like, okay, Gabby, maybe you should slow down a bit and like say what you think your opponent's gonna do before you click buttons. And Showdown makes it incredibly easy to do that too, which is frustrating a little bit. So, at Kangaskhan at minus um, two, I really don't think it's going to stay in here. I would not be surprised if we see a Landorus on his side. So, I'm not going to go for the fighting move into Kangaskhan. I am going to go straight for knockoff, and I'm going to go for Stone Edge into Thunderous, who's probably going to Thunderbolt something. So, if I can get rid of Landorus's Choice Scarf, it'll certainly help out a little bit. A lot of it, actually. Um... And if I wanted to here, I could try and switch in my Lodic to see if I could get like a competitive boost, but because I'm slower than both of his Pokemon, um, I would actually send my Lodic out after the Intimidate, which would just be sad. And I really want to get rid of Thunderous before I send my Lodic in anyways, so hopefully this turn that'll happen. 
And I said what he was gonna do before I clicked button, so I do not regret this turn. I say now before the turn actually happens. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> now I'm starting to regret the buttons I clicked. It's just, it's just a matter of time. If you sit here long enough, you will, it's like staring into the void. You're just like, oh no. All my worst fears are gonna come true. <laughs> uh, all right, anyways, Thunderous goes for the Sky Drop. Double Edge will connect with Scrafty. Does not get the KO. Um, Kangaskhan, surprisingly enough, does not switch out, which is very strange because Sky Drop isn't gonna do that much damage to Entei. Not really sure why he did that. Um, good to know, though, that that Thunderous does have Hidden Power Ice, Sky Drop, um, and Thunderbolt with a Life Orb. So the last slot is either Taunt or Protect, if I had to guess. Um, as for what I'm going to do now, it's really tempting to actually go for the Drain Punch again. And in fact, I think I have to because Scrafty's health is getting a little bit too low for comfort. Um, this would be a really interesting time to set up a substitute because I know that Skydrop isn't going to do that much damage to Entei and having a sub up with Landorus most likely coming in would certainly help, so I am going to do that. Um, I think Skydrop is probably going to do around 20 to 30%. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done these damage calcs, but Skydrop is usually a move on Thunderous that does a little bit more of utility than anything else, but it crits, and Double Edge will connect with Entei and crit again, so Entei dies to crits. Oh my god. Okay, um, well there goes my master plan. <laughs> um, two crits in one turn again. RNG, not on my side this time. Um, I think next game I'm gonna have to lead heavy against Thunderous because this is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, so I pretty much have, I think I pretty much lost this game, even though I don't have, he doesn't have a Mega anymore. Um, yeah, that, I needed Entei to stay alive that turn. Um, and that really didn't happen, so GG. Anyways, uh, Aegislash comes in. Uh, remember, Aegislash is slower than, um, uh, or is faster than my Scrafty, so I could just go straight for knockoff here. But unfortunately, I need Thunderous to die because my Lodic is pretty much a sitting duck in terms of uh, Thunderbolt Life Orb problems. So yeah, we are going to go for the knockoff onto Thunderous to get rid of Life Orb. We're gonna recover, and if I can, if my Lodic stays alive this turn, I have a shot. If my Lodic dies, then I do not have a shot. So. That's my win condition. Makes me wish I could run five moves and have protect and recover, but hey, sometimes you gotta make you gotta make choices, and a lot of times, um, it's just for the best. Anyways, um, Shadow Ball is Age of Slash is also faster than my Lodic, so that means that I am pretty much out of luck here. Um, I tried to recover, it failed, and now it's just Scrafty versus the world. Um, I mean, I could still pull this off, because I did get rid of Thunderous's Life Orb. Um, it's not gonna be pretty, it's not very likely. In fact, I would be tempted to forfeit here if, um, if I knew that there was gonna be a Game 3, but I don't think there's much knowledge that he can gain about my Scrafty that he hasn't gained from just watching my streams in general, so I'm gonna play it out. I am going for the KO on Thunderous because Actually, I don't know. That might be a mistake. Maybe I should go for Aegislash? Anyways, I I guess I didn't because, um, yeah, Landorus T comes in. Uh, Thunderbolt will connect with Scrafty, brings it down to half health. Thankfully, it doesn't paralyze it. At this point, I'd kind of expect it. Um, anyways, it is Landorus T and Scrafty versus, um, I mean, Landorus T and Aegislash versus Scrafty. Um, I, my only option here is to try and get it down to one on one. So I am gonna go for knockoff. Anyway, superpower makes that not possible. Good to know that Landry's T has superpower, and we're going to game three. Um, hopefully, there's not as much hacks this time around. Uh, and 
I think, because that's the second game in a row he led that Thunderous. So I think my only choice here is to not lead my Lodic when when I see Thunderous. I don't just I don't think bringing my Lodic was a mistake. I just think that I played it really wrong. So let's lead Landris Entei. Um, I do want to keep Scrafty because even though it's really slow, it's doing work and I could bring my Thunderous. This is a Life Orb Thunderous, um, but I don't. Oh, it does have HP Ice. I don't think. I don't think it'll be that much help, really. Um, decisions. Um, I'm gonna bring my Lodic again. I. This is probably a mistake, but I. My gut is telling me that this is the right play, so I'm gonna go with my gut. It might be wrong, but we're gonna tr we're gonna try it anyways. Um, because again, Metagross just doesn't do enough work against this. I mean, I could have led Metagross, protected, Mega evolved, and then gone for an Ice Punch to KO that Thunderous like right off the bat. Oh geez, it's really tempting to change my my lead in order to do that. But I'm tr I'm trying to not play with uh, showdown rules, and I'm trying to just stick with the buttons I press. So, no hands on the keyboard. Anyways, the game starts, and we see another Thunderous Kangaskhan lead. So, this time, he's gonna have to pick what happens. And I am gonna say... Okay, last time this happened, he's faked out the Landorus consistently. So let's try and account for that. And I am gonna switch in my Lodic. I can always switch my Lodic out, as long as... Landorus T is still alive. So, yeah, and if I'm lucky, Stone Edge here will pick up a KO on um, Thunderous. So, let's try and do this better this time, guys. <laughs> Anyways, Kangaskhan Mega Evolves. It will go for the fake out onto Entei. There goes my attempt to do it better. Um, and he doubles into the Entei slot. So, yeah, there goes that. I tried. Um,. Oh, it's so tough because really Thunderbolt here could take out anything. But I have a gut feeling that he's going to go for Entei again. I don't know. Best of free mind games, man. And even, even if this does backfire, I think um, having Kangaskhan down to minus two will be helpful. And anyways, Thunderbolt does connect with my Lodic. It paralyzes it. Oh, geez. Here we go. Here we go. Um, Double Edge will go into Landorus Therian. Doesn't crit this time, so that's nice. But my Lodic does get Ice Beam off and puts Thunderous into Rock Slide damage uh, area, words, things. So here I... I'm probably going to end up seeing a Sucker Punch from Kangaskhan if I had to guess. So, I am going to switch in Scrafty. I... Ah, uh, no. Yeah, let's go for Recover. Let's go for Rock Slide. Um, hopefully Rock Slide will connect. If it doesn't, I will be really sad. <laughs> um... Also, that paralysis on my Lodic is making me really nervous because hacks kind of screwed me last game. So, anyways, Thunderous goes away. In comes Aegislash. Rock Slide will connect with both sides of the field. It does a little bit of damage, not that much. Double Edge, however, will happen and misses the KO on Landorus with 1%. And my Lodic recovers. So, this is actually not that bad of a turn for me. Um, from here, though, I have to kind of play very conservatively. Um, my biggest fear here is that Kangaskhan's gonna switch out, so I am gonna switch out my Landorus because I don't want it to die just quite yet. Um, even though it's at 1%, it's Scarfed and it can still do work, so I am gonna switch in Scrafty and I'm gonna go for Scald onto the Kangaskhan slot. Um, I don't think Kangaskhan's gonna stay in right now, and if it does, I'll be very surprised. Um, it looks like it might actually. Uh, 
I was really hoping to see Landorus come in, but I guess not. Anyway, Sucker Punch does not connect with Scrafty because of the switch. Aegislash gets a substitute up, and Scald will connect with Kangaskhan and bring it down to pretty much KO range, which is which is good. Um, so now, I guess just Scald Kangaskhan again, go for knockoff onto Aegislash. I mean, King Shield could happen, but I can switch around that still. I still have Entei in the back. Um, actually, I know I said I wouldn't cancel, but I just did it. No, I gotta stick with it. I, no canceling. No canceling. Um, oh, this is so hard. I'm so worried about that King Shield right now. I shouldn't be. I really shouldn't be, but I am. I mean, Cage Slash is behind a sub. Okay, yeah, so no need to be afraid of the, uh, King... King Shield because Aegislash does go for Flash Cannon into Scrafty, gets another crit because I think that's just where we're at right now in terms of Scrafty. Um, and Scald will get the KO onto Kangaskhan. Little bit worried here because we're probably going to see Thunderous come in and attempt to go for the double KO here. Uh, which will leave me with Entei and uh, whatchamacallit. Entei and uh, Landorus left, both of whom do not have a lot of HP. So, this is going to be a really tough play because if he calls my switch into Landorus, then I'm pretty much screwed. I feel like switching into Landorus is so obvious here, though. You know what? I'm I'm gonna go for it. But I'm gonna have my Lodic attack eight. No, my Lodic's my Lodic's gonna need to be alive. Uh, I feel like the switch to Landris here is so obvious, but I really want to do it. <sighs> Unless he doubled into the my Lodic spot, thinking that. Oh, well, if Thunderbolt fails, then at least something else will happen. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, jeez. Uh, anyways, okay. Thunderous switches out. So my Lodic gets the competitive boost. As long as I can attack this turn, I'm not as screwed as I thought I was. Please, my Lodic, please don't be fully paralyzed. Yes! Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> um, that turn went about as well as any turn could go for me. So I have the competitive boost. I still have Landorus alive. And I have Entei with a sliver of health left in the back. Um, things that could go wrong here that would really screw me up. If, if his Thunderous has Protect, which a lot of Life Orb ones do, myself included. Um... It could be bad, but because of that, I am going to press Rock Slide, and I am going to try and Scald into Aegislash. I think I can kill it no matter what. So, fingers crossed. This game isn't over, but that, that last turn certainly shifted the momentum a lot into my favor. <laughs> Ugh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I need to breathe. I'm getting all flustered again. <laughs> Um, oh, man, tough plays, tough plays, and this, I mean, you're not going to see this for like a couple weeks, but I did a, I recorded a podcast with Canocast yesterday, and people were asking about my thoughts on chalk, and I just want to like throw it out there that, uh, you know, while it's a very basic core, we were able to have a very high level game here. Um, and I think that's kind of the benefit for Chalk is that, you know, if you're just starting out and you want to be able to play at a very high level and get, start playing with more of the mind games and less of the, like, type matchups, it can really help to, uh, you know, just pick up something that you know works, like Chalk in this case, and use it and learn how to play the game, like the mind game as opposed to the, like, normal game. Anyways, Firemind forfeited great games, um, came down to mind games in the end, which always makes me feel kind of happy, honestly, because I, I hate it when the RNG takes over. Um, 
it could have very well gone to Firemind. If I were fully paralyzed that turn with the Ice Beam, I think that would have been enough momentum for him to take it. So great games. Um, thank you so much for watching on Twitch. Thank you for the challenge. Um, hey, if you liked this battle and you want to see more of them, press the subscribe button. Um, you know, follow me on Twitter, Twitch. Again, I know I don't stream that often, but oh, I have hiccups. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I know I don't stream that often, but you know, when I do, you can earn points and maybe you'll be up on one of these videos someday. So thank you all for your support. I hope you have a great Sunday, a great week, and I will be back tomorrow with another battle of the day. See ya. Wait, where's the stop recording button? Oh God. Bye. <laughs>